Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. <clears throat> Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The word who was at the beginning was with God and is God. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Yes, he loves us. He so loved the world, he sent his son, John 3, 16. But we love him and we are called to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that was Mark 12, 30. And we also know that all things work together for good for those who love him. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Indeed, who have been called according to his purpose, Romans 8 to 8. You know, when you love God, nothing can separate you from loving God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God because you have been called according to his purpose. Why or how? It happens the moment you become a child of God, born again in Jesus Christ, you begin that process of becoming what you were created to be right from the beginning. And that happens through his son, Jesus Christ, for all things were created for him and through him. The son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things on, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Amen. Colossians 1, 15 through 17. Because of that truth, we realize that his peace is not the world's peace. His peace surpasses all understanding. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, will, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Again, all things work together for good for those who love him. Yes, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. And when you pray, do not babble on like the pagans, who, for they think that by their many words they will be heard. So then, this is how you should pray. Our Father in, hev our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 8 through 10. You know, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their own wickedness. For what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made, made it plain to them, made it plain to everybody. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from his workmanship, so that men are without excuse. Romans 1, 18 to 20. We just watched a documentary on fungus. What we thought was a documentary in the traditional sense, it turned out to be the promo for a new age religion. It was a shame to watch educated and claim, people claiming to be raised Christian adults claiming now that spores are the god of creatures, including man. That's the worship of the creation. But folks, that's where we are today. 
People worship the creation. They love nature more than the creator. They love their pets more than the creator. They love their bucket list more than the creator. They love their newfound identity in their own flesh. For example, gender fluidity is the fashion. This is actually a punishment for refusing to accept God as the creator. In the end times, in the last days, men, many will be given over to a reprobate mind. Men have abandoned natural relations with women and burned with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, he gave them up to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossipers, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent new forms of evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, and mercil merciless. Romans 1, 27-31 Indeed, God's wrath against sin is being revealed to us now. Let's again read from Romans 1, verse, starting at verse 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Truth suppression is everywhere. For what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from his workmanship, so that men are without excuse. Continuing, for, all they knew, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. Why? because they became futile in their thinking and darkened in their foolish hearts. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images of mortal man and birds and animals and even reptiles. And therefore God gave them over because they refused to recognize him as creator. They gave, God gave them over in their desires of their hearts to impurity for the dishonoring of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served creature rather than the creator who is worth forever worthy of praise. Amen. And yes, in 1 Corinthians 10, 23, you can read where it says everything is permissible, but not everything edifies. Not everything is good for you to be doing especially in the flesh. You know, if you really loved God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, why or how could you love your flesh or the creation more than loving God? God gives over those to a reprobate mind because they do not recognize this truth. They do not love him. And he does not make all things good for them, but he does for those that love him. Is there any hope for someone like that? Well, yes, God takes no pleasure in such punishment. He does so in order that those yet pursuing and engaged in sin will turn away from sin and toward him. He then can turn around anyone because they recognize him as the creator of all things, seen and unseen. They are filled with love for him and from him. And in that moment have been called according to his purpose. What is God's purpose for me? What is his purpose? God's grand purpose is for his kingdom to come. And indeed, Jesus Christ is coming again. But in the meantime, we all are in a kind of process of coming into being in the present time with him through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us the redeeming and restoring work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Christ and by the trans formative power of the Holy Spirit, God is at work preparing a people to populate his new world. 
it is very important to be one of the called according to his purpose. And if you have been redeemed and born again in the spirit and you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have been called according to his purpose. But it's important for us to recognize <coughs> that as the, particularly the Western world, has decided to cast off God as the creator and reject uh, him completely, we have noticed that our society is literally being given over to a reprobate mind. Now, some people believe there's going to be a punishment for having a reprobate mind. But folks, the reprobate mind is the punishment. The, the LGBTQ plague that's overrunning the West, especially the United States, is the punishment. Will there be punishment for doing it? Of course there will. But it's important to remember that the behavior is the result of the rejection of God as creator. And since 1960s, the United States has decided to reject God as creator. And it didn't take very long after that for the entire sexual revolution to appear, which was inevitably to lead to a reprobate mind and behavior. And that is exactly where the Bible said it would go. You know, but God could turn anyone around, anyone, no matter how reprobate you may be. When you turn to him and recognize him as the creator of all things unseen, then you'll be filled with love for him and from, and from him. And in that moment, you have been called according to his purpose. Well, thank you for joining us for this Lions Table, a Sunday edition. We hope it's been a blessing to you. And as always, we invite you to join us again next time.